um, getting on the boat um, looking for our little pygmy seahorse. So that's what we're doing. <sighs> Rich is taking forever. <laughs> I'm in my wetsuits now, I've got my heated vest, I'm good to go. It's chilly here, but we're wishing for luck today. It's not chilly at all. <laughs> the sun is shining. It is summer. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> help me! Richard! He's not helping me! I'm freezing. I'm trying. Today we went looking for the South African pygmy seahorse, but we found a baby, but went to collect the a pair for the description, but couldn't find them. We're a bit flat and cold and wet. So the reason I came to Sidwana was in about end of last year, I got a picture of a pygmy pipe horse and I sent it to everyone and everyone said it is a pipe horse, we need to come and find it. So Dave, Rasti, and I organized a field trip and we came in January, all geared up to find the pipe horse. And while we were here in horrible weather, we met Savannah and she showed us some pictures of what she thought was the same critter, a pipe horse, and it was in fact a little pygmy seahorse. And that made everyone extremely excited. Very excited. And that's why, um, yeah, that's why we are here, or I'm here. And at the same time, almost just probably a month before you came here to look for the pipe horse, I was in New Zealand looking for another species of new pygmy pipe horse, and this one in Africa is brand new this pygmy yeah. pipe horse that you'd initially seen. So that got us all excited. And then when there was a pygmy seahorse, we were all very, very excited. And that's how I got involved, having done my PhD on pygmy seahorses. Yeah. And so that's why we find ourselves ready to go looking for a pygmy seahorse tomorrow. In Africa? A brand new species. There's what? <laughs> supposed to only be in Indonesia, really. You know, like there's never been one recorded from the Indian Ocean before. So South Africa is a long way from home. So this is pretty cool in terms of finding out about their genetics, what they're doing here, who it is, naming it. Is it a new species? I mean... We can make our assumptions, but we haven't seen one yet, so no. we need to no, go and No, so we need to go one. and look. We need to work with the, the local divers like Savannah um, and find it. And Savannah has been able to give us a lot of information, Lots. like she yeah. found it for the first time She's been watching these animals since, when, December last year? 16 December 2017, she said. So that's about 10 months ago. Yeah. So it's great that she's been recording so much for us. Mm. And, yeah. And set finding it. Yeah. And telling people so we can know about <laughs> exactly. it. So we can get here and look for it and hopefully find out more about it. Perfect. Let's do it. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> There's a flat section here, sandy rock, that type of yeah. bottom. So there's some loose rocks yeah. and some growth around so there. Like bigger algae. It's 
seems like it may be another new species to add to the roster. So it's kind of basically everything we could have dreamed. We found it. I didn't think, I really didn't think it was going to happen. God, the tensions were high. We yes. were so nervous that we, it's like finding a needle in a haystack. This pygmy seahorse is 1.6 centimeters long. And it's the ocean. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I did not think so. Um, I do think if we didn't have the local diver Savannah with us, yeah. it would not have happened. She got the habitat, she got the area. Um, that's so she impressive. Took a, she hadn't seen one in a few months. Yeah. But she said, this is where I've seen some before. Let's go down and show just like the habitat, which was like a sandy channel. And they were just kind of hooked on the edge there. Like in the dirt. Yeah. They're crazy. <laughs> it's I mean, arbitrary. They're <laughs> definitely a new species. Yes. So. Yes. They look very, very different. Um, but it's amazing seeing a thing that teeny tiny. Not even. Um, okay. <laughs> that tiny? Yeah. So 1.6 centimeters is kind of stretched yeah. across a dime, almost, a US dime. And it's a perfectly formed little seahorse. Yeah. Perfect. And so amazing. Just clinging on with their tiny tails and very much like an Indonesian Pontos pygmy seahorse, mm -hmm. but yeah but a very long way from An there. African one. Yes. The first Sturdy. African one. Yeah. Yes. And you got good photos? Yeah. So we have some photos. So we saw a little male and a female. Yeah. We checked them out. Yeah. Spent some time with them. Yeah. And then, yeah. Very cool. Celebrated. Exactly. Thank God. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> So the, we've got some shots from our first sightings of this amazing new species. Now that we look at it, um, it's interesting to compare it to the Japanese pygmy seahorse that I named this year. Um, this one is very different. Superficially, they, I thought they were very similar, but now I get mm -hmm. a closer look at this guy, you can really tell the difference. Like what? What's like? He's got a much thicker neck. The mm -hmm. nose seems very much shorter. Um, this was the male that we saw, there mm. was a female as well. Um, so yeah, there's quite a lot of differences. I mean, they're very subtle, but when you've spent so long with pygmy seahorses, yeah. you know, you get to pick out these differences between them. Um, these little filaments on the back are re really distinct. Um, they're very sturdy and short in these mm. um, South African ones. Um, so yeah. Is that usual for pygmies to have the, the filaments at the back? They have, yeah. These, this group with the Pontos, Pygmy and Satomi and them, they all have a little, some sort of little filament, okay. but it just varies um, according to the species. It was quite interesting for this guy to live in, a, in an area where the current and the surge can be quite bad um, and it's able to hold on. Yeah. Not wash away. I've never seen a pygmy in a habitat like that. They tend to, they don't mind a bit of surge, but this epic. is really, I mean, it was being sandblasted <laughs> by the surge when the, yeah. it was, the sand was being picked up by the swell and it was just blasting these poor little guys, but they were quite content going about their business. We saw them swimming around in the mm. crazy sand. It was like a snow globe <laughs> where they live, um, but it was pretty amazing. So this is the Japanese pygmy seahorse that um, myself and some colleagues described this year, 2018. Um, you can really see 
the pattern is very very different in mm. these guys um the s snout is very much more slender mm. um all in all it's a much um more slender animal um it's got these different sort of processes here you can see those same filaments on the back here the neck is very much thinner yeah it's an interesting difference it's a bit sleeker yeah for sure so we have another one here another of these japanese pygmy mm. seahorses but then when you compare it to this um south african one yeah, it's really, really very different uh, much more blunt snout and yeah. yeah very different so today we found a mated male and female pair and the male here is um, pregnant. You can really see on his belly that he's really round. So that means he's carrying babies. So his belly is really, really big and round in this shot. Um, they seem to be covered in an interesting fuzz, like an algal fuzz or something. We don't quite know what that is. It's not something you often see in pygmies. Um, and they have really interesting bumps all over the body that seem to be in specific places, um, which is nice to see. So this is the male, and the female here is quite different in colour. Um, she's got all these um, circles and this crazy pattern all over her, um, which is somewhat reminiscent of the Japanese pygmy, but very different indeed again. Um, so you can really see that difference in the male and the female. Would the male change colour when it's a mating season or not really? I would imagine not. I think they probably just have this camouflaged colour to help okay. break out their outline. Um, maybe it's that the female tends to be around the sand more often because it's richer food. From my research on the Denise's pygmies, the females had a slightly bigger home range than the males. Okay. Probably because when the males are pregnant, their belly gets so full that they can't swim very far. Mm. Okay, so the cool thing we found today, which I am absolutely amazed about, is a little juvenile. Yeah. Like a teeny tiny... You really, even, you know, I've spent many, many hours looking at pygmies in the heartland of Indonesia. You don't see babies very often. How did you find it? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's head is similar to about five grains of sand but I just it's kind of your brain gets a search image and then it helps mm. you find them so yeah I mean this baby I don't know it's probably a centimeter ten millimeters long so yeah it yeah. was exciting to find but mostly like you were saying because we didn't know if they breed here yes or not. yes and um, so we can make kind of an assumption that we've got a breeding population this is where they do occur. They don't just flush down from yeah. up, up the coast. Because we didn't know, you know, maybe the currents were bringing the babies, yeah. but it seems like, yeah, we had that breeding pair. Yeah. He was definitely pregnant and we found this baby and it's, you know, early spring here. Mm. So they probably were overwintering. It's not just a, you know, vagrant population. No, which is super exciting. It's really cool. Yeah. And the babies, they're usually black. Yeah, so like all pygmies, it seems like these guys are quite dark in colour when they... Are pro they're probably dark in colour when they're born and then they float away in the ocean currents after being released by their father and then they settle onto the reef again. And for camouflage, they tend to be quite dark in colour and for the first few days at least after they settle. Um, but this guy was tiny. Tiny, um, tiny. And it even's got the big blobs and, and polyps coming up. Yeah, you body. can really, there's certain ones that seem to be specific and diagnostic almost for yeah. the species. But you can see here grains of sand. <laughs> so these tiny belt boulders are grains of sand. So these guys really are tiny. Um, and we just found him clinging quite happily onto this um, little rock outcrop and yeah. Quite exposed. Yeah. In fact. He was flailing all over the place. Yeah. Um, so, seeing that there's juveniles, uh, newly settled, does this kind of indicate that there's a population and they're here, they're resident, they're breeding? Yeah, I mean, I think yeah. there's probably many more than we can appreciate. You mm. know, they're so tiny and so cryptic. They're so well camouflaged. You aren't going to ever be able to, you know, find all of them. But, yeah, I think there's probably a fair amount that, and they're this is evidence that they're settling at least mm. and we've got 
shots of the pregnant male. So I think, yeah, they're... It's not a, an animal that just drifts down from up the coast. This I, is the... I think there's a resident breeding yeah. population here, okay. yeah. Brilliant. It really, really that was a cool. lucky find. Yeah. No, skill. Yeah, skill. <laughs> it was skill. <laughs>